Hello again, fellow coders. Welcome to this next lesson in our Fresh Vote series, where we are building a real-world uh, Java web application from scratch. So, uh, in the previous video, we were diving into the concept of uh, the features uh, page, and um, it wasn't a pretty page, so uh, we need to pretty that up. So, I believe this is a URL that, oh yeah, we need to log in first. Let me log in. So yes, this is one of the features. So this feature is feature ID three, and it belongs to product ID one, hence the URL structure here. So on this page, you wanted to pretty it up. So the first thing that we can do to pretty it up is bring in some bootstrap, uh, extra bootstrap to make these um, work a lot better than they do. So I, I talked about that. And also we, we considered making the description be a text area. So basically I could look at uh, existing code that I have already for Bootstrap, or I could just go back to the Bootstrap page, get bootstrap.com, click on get started and start to show you how I would go about uh, figuring out how to stylize everything. And I think that's more more um, helpful just to go you know over again how I do this stuff. So if you go to documentation, I go to components, and in forms, because this is going to be a form, you can see sort of how to structure things. Um, so I think typically I do the form where it is the horizontal form, so everything's on the same line. Um, although that won't be what I want to do for the description, I don't think. So yeah, maybe I will do it in this in this format um, where you have the label above the input itself. So fair enough, let's do that. So we have this example of a form and we have some classes, you know, form group, uh, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So <clears throat> let's take a look at our code. So this is the feature page. We have a form already. So check, we have a form. But then inside of here, we have uh, divs with our inputs here. But uh, the divs are not styled or they don't have any classes on them. So that's essentially what we need to do. We need to add uh, classes to our divs. Uh, the first class is going to be form group. So let's do that. Class equals form group. And the reason why I can do this and jump into form group and, and have this bootstrap stuff is because it is included in our header. So we have this fragment here um, that uh, is bringing in stuff from the header file. So if you search for header, you'll find header.html. And that's where our bootstrap uh, styles are coming in as well as I believe the bootstrap, um, what should we call it, uh, JavaScript as well. Cool. So that's, you know, just so you know, it, that's actually on the page already. So that's why I can use class form group and, and class container, that kind of stuff. So, um, cool. Uh, let me go now to, okay, form group. I lost my train of thought there. So we have a label, we have an input uh, type, and then down here, you, you see this thing. This is a small, I've never, I've never seen this before, small, but I guess that's the way to format it so that it's, you know, looks a little prettier in terms of the, the text size. But uh, anyway, we want a form group, we want a label, and we want an input type, and the input type will have a class. And uh, let's do that. So class is form control for the input, uh, and the label doesn't have any classes. So we'll do input type is text, class equals form control, I believe is what it was, form control. Uh, and the label is whatever it is. Um, and in here they have the four, so this, what this does is it links up with the ID. So these two values are the same. So that means when you click on the label, it will highlight the input element. So it's not critical that we have that, but it's kind of a, you know, nice to have. So we can do that too. We can say for, for our label equals the ID of the field. And the ID will be assigned this uh, by default. This is what Timeleaf does. It, it structures uh, the input element with an ID. Of course, you could always override it with whatever ID you want, but that will be the ID. It will be title. Okay, and we can do the same thing for the uh, other guy, the description. Okay, so we can do a for on the label equals description. And that should make it a little bit prettier. So let's go ahead and refresh. And there you go. So we have, um, oh, shoot. Oh, no, that's right. I was going to say, oh, no, I have some... Um, pre-existing placeholding text, but no, this is actually text that I had typed in myself. So that's okay. Um, so we have our label, and if I click on the label, you see it highlights the element. If I click on this label, it highlights that element, okay? So there you go. Um, let's see. Now I was considering making the description a text area. Let's, let's, um, let's play with that a little bit. Let's try that. Text area. <clears throat> 
and we'll say th field equals uh, feature dot description and let's try class equals form control I've never tried this on a text area before and I don't know if this is gonna work um, let's see if this works okay interesting so it, it kinda does work I, I don't see why that's uh, any worse off than we were before uh, when I'm clicking on description it's not tying into it though text area teach field so the the uh, the ID might be different for this guy uh, no ID is description oh I have a space that's why there we go get rid of my space refresh click on description there you go now it highlights it very good okay so that's sweet I like that now the only, only other thing is the save buttons a little too close so we can add some margin to that save button um, we'll just I'll just do style margin top is like let's do two M's or something push it down good now the other thing to make it look pretty is how it should function when we shrink the page and make it mobile so if I shrink the page what does it look like what does it do um, and as far as I'm concerned that's fine the way it's behaving right now uh, because we don't have it all on one row like sometimes I do um, that's already behaving like I would have it behave if it was um, mobile okay I usually break it into you know one the each element would have its own row so to speak uh, but since that's already how it is then we're good we don't have to worry about the mobile friendliness of that because it's already friendly on a mobile device okay so now what's next I was talking about adding the uh, or making the status not hidden okay so let's migrate this from a hidden field to be an actual um, well non hidden field for now we can do a div class uh, form group well really this is just a label right this is really just two labels, really. Um, hmm, how would I do this? Because this, it's almost like the status should be, you know what, the status should be a different type of component. Um, I believe there's a, a type of component in um, Bootstrap that would fit this. Um, what is it, badge, I think it's called a badge. Yes, so we can have the status be a badge. Um, and I kind of like that, yeah. So span class badge, blah, 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 blah. Uh, okay, so let's do that. So let's paste that back in the hidden type, uh, hidden status type, but then let's bring in this code, make it a span, and let's put this next to the H1, just, just like they have here, right? They have an H1 with example heading and then they have this badge. Um, so let's paste this in um, inside of the uh, new feature, uh, what should we call it? heading so and then let's inside of the span will be uh, I guess a th text right because really this is this this uh, the status is not you can't type in a status right so this is just read only type thing so we can do th text to make it read only uh, and we can do feature dot status okay now we still need to pass the status along as a hidden field I just realized this um, because when we save the um, uh, form we want to pass that status along so that it gets saved back into the database as is so this still needs to be a hidden type um, but now we're just also displaying it right so pending review is the um, the status that is currently in the database right so that's great I think that looks fairly nice I mean it it's not hugely nice it's it's a bit in my face in terms of how it looks so maybe we could make it um, a little bit smaller uh, let's see what other my allergies are acting up here um, can we make it badge pill more rounded Meh, I don't need a more rounded contextual variations add any below mentioned modifiers classes to change the appearance yeah yeah badge primary secondary blah 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 I'm already familiar with that at least hopefully you're, you're familiar with that stuff too so I think one way that we can do this is is to pull it out of the h1 uh, and put it next to it although that might push it to the next line if I'm not mistaken yeah it puts it pushes it to the next line now we might be able to fight that by forcing it into a row we can have a div class equals row right and we can move this stuff into the row and basically the h1 um, I think we can wrap it in a div and say uh, 
call, you know, this this should take up, you know, eight of the 12 um, columns. And then the other thing, the span should take up um, class equals call four. So four of the 12. That might work. We might be able to get away with that. Yeah, so that sort of puts it up here. Um, and then we can uh, change things to make it a little, I mean, maybe a little bit bigger. So maybe instead of a span class, we do like an H4 class. So this is where we just play around and see what it looks like, right? Um, did I save that? Doesn't seem to make a difference. H3. Interesting, it's not changing the look of it. H2. Why would it not be changing the look of it? Huh. H1. So maybe that's part of the badge itself? Interesting. I didn't realize that that would have that kind of effect. So the other thing that I can think of doing is to make it back into a... Well, let's make it a div. No, we can make it a span. Whatever. I don't think it really matters since we're leveraging um, bootstrap here. Well, what we can do is we can add some embedded styles, like maybe the text, um, shoot, I forget, what, is it text size? I forget the style. Let me just add style here, refresh, and click on this guy. And then, so what I do here is I, I, I use the inspector, so I hit F12 to bring up this um, inspector window. I hit select element and I click on the element. So I have the span here. And then over here in the filter in the element.style, I can start messing around with styles. So I can say text, uh, is it size? No, what is text? Text align, decoration. Maybe it's, uh, I'm thinking of another property. Oh, what is it? Font? Font size, there we go. So if I say 2M, there we go. Okay, so we can, do, we can use a font size, 1.25 M's. Um, so yeah, that's kind of nice, 1.15. I kind of like 1.25. And then we need to add a bit of spacing from the top, so a little, bit, a little bit of margin top. Although I don't think you can do margins with spans. If I say 1M, oh, you, good, you can, good, good, good. Can never remember. So 1.2, 1.3, you know. What, what looks good? 1.5? Sure, let's do 1.5. So now I can take this styling, and really if I was being good here, I wouldn't, I'm gonna pop, copy paste it into the style, the, the you know inline style. If I was being good, I would assign these, uh, th this uh, styling to a class and assign it here. Um, but I'm, I'm being a little lazy with my, with my coding. Next thing we need to new, do is to uh, make sure it looks nice on, on mobile. So you see here, it's getting a bit squished. So this is where I think what might look better is, um, let's see, instead of making this call eight, let's say this is call SM eight and call SM four, but for the, um, when we're on full mobile view, we'll make them a, a row for each of them, right? So let's refresh. So see see what happened there? And then when I make it a little bigger, it pops up because it, now it's uh, small, right? So that's bootstrap for you. So for sm when it's a small screen, this div will take up eight columns and this div will take up four. But we're, when we're on an extra small, in other words, a full mobile view, uh, this one will take up an entire row and this one will take up an entire row. So that's what we're seeing here, okay? Um, and then, you know, styling, we can make the first uh, div form group have a little bit of top margin. So for this guy, um, or even the whole form, we can have it have a little bit of top margin, you know, 1M top margin or something, just to push that down a little bit. Uh, there you go. So that looks pretty good, right? That looks a lot better than what we were working with before. Now let's always make sure we test stuff out. You know, this is an updated description make the product better, uh, let's make it better, okay? Let's click save, make sure that works. Okay, it looks like it's good. If I refresh the page, we're good. Uh, so the only other remaining thing was when I save, um, there's no sort of feedback that this feature has been saved. So um, one thing that I was thinking of doing is going back to where we came from, uh, which would potentially be the dashboard. Uh, I'm gonna click on, pro no, but that's not where we came from. 
we were in the product view. So P dash, you know, product one, I think is what the product was. Yeah. So really we should probably go back to this page uh, when we save it and then we'll see uh, it in the list of products. Okay. So that right now we don't see the feature in the list of products, even though it's associated with this product, it's not on the list. So that's what we can do in the next video. When we actually click on save for the feature, um, it'll come back to this view and then we'll see the, the feature here and then we can click on it if it belongs to us and that kind of thing. So that we can all cover in the next video. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you enjoy this content. Uh, even give the uh, video you just watched a like if it was helpful to you. Um, and if you have any questions or concerns about this particular lesson, feel free to leave a comment below. So as always, take care of yourself. Happy learning and bye for now.